Okay, guys, so here we are at chapter 65 of Kaito Kill Him and Reborn. And after, you know, the whole Chikusa versus Gokudera, and we think, you know, Gokudera is going to leave on Sketch. That wasn't the case by the ending of chapter 64, where before Chikusa can really go down for the count after getting blown up in the face by many bombs, he managed to hit Gokudera all over the chest with a bunch of pins, a bunch of needles, and then Gokudera is the one that goes down. So at that time as well, that's when Suna came to go find Gokudera and saw the whole ordeal happen. And now Suna is defenseless. No one is, can protect him. And I know some people were like, yo, why don't you go charge out a dude that's already injured? Remember at the end of the day, Suna is still despite being the next heir to the Bongola organization, he's a 14 year old kid. He, Madu has no physical athletic, um, athleticism or anything of that sort. Okay, he's your average or probably below average teenager. So just before he can get hit, we have where Yamamoto literally does a baseball save getting soon out of the way before he would have got stabbed multiple times by hundreds of needles like Gokudera who's lying in a puddle of blood and that's where they announced that the second strongest student right after Hibari in Namimori Middle School is Yamamoto and this is probably I, I yeah this is the first time we've ever saw in the series prior to any other chapter or anything where Yamamoto gets angry, like seriously angry. This ain't no, you know, jokey joke or, you know, um, I'm just playing around. This guy was ready to murder Chikusa right on sight because he saw what happened to Gokudera. He's laying out cold, about to die due to blood loss, and then Suno was about to get attacked. And of course, friends of his in the school as well are also in the hospital. So he whips out, you thinking he's whipping out his uh, baseball bat, but not. Nah, so, my bad. <laughs> Instead, it's a sword. So you're thinking, hold on, for a dude, for a dude that plays baseball, why does he have a sword? That will be later talked about in upcoming chapters, okay? And if you think about it, it's, it's probably not too hard to think about baseball, sword fighting. Just try to see the connections there. And Chikusa's like, you know what? I'm not even going to try to fight this battle. You're Ken's prey. So he walks off mumbling i need to go take a shower my, no you need to go to a hospital my bro you you got blown up you lucky you you didn't lose a limb you walking away with blood because police were coming so what happened afterwards is due to the fact that the entire namimori town is basically at high alert because of what's happening at the at the school on top of that with the hospital being over populated with all these students continuously coming in and everything is also a hot spot for a potential another attack on students and the only reason Yamamoto was able to come and save Suna as soon as he did is because they were actually thinking even though they should have closed on the school they did half a day but again at least you can give them some some type of credit even though they should have closed down the school the minute they heard one or two students were injured or being targeted from there instead of doing half a day would keep on school but so instead of going to the hospital to bring Gokudera there where he could have possibly got attacked again or anybody that was on the list they brought him back to the school into the infirmary. So while they're there, we have where Bianchi comes. Remember, Bianchi is the half sister of Gokudera. And she's like, I'm going to go and nurse him back to hell. Also, Dr. Shamal is there as well. And it looks like he's going to take care of Gokudera. Again, I do want you guys to take note of their relationships, Gokudera and Dr. Shamal. It's for the next arc after this. Just take that into consideration. So while that that's happening and you know he's taking care and Bianchi's looking after Gokudera 
we have where Suna is just like he's really in his head he's like why is this all going on my he notices reborn something drops on his face and he realizes reborn is on the ceiling and what looks like to be a stretched out web of Leon come to find out Leon is now going back into a regular state so he's just in a cocoon meaning when you're in a cocoon something is about to rebirth Leon is up in the stages of being reborn okay which is fascinating because as I stated before when Leon's tail drops off it's a signal for something very dangerous to happen and usually I guess in the animal world when a when a reptilian's tail or skin starts to shed or break off its skin regrows it goes through almost like a rebirth stage or even with insects like butterflies they go into the cocoon stage first they were worms and they go into the cocoon stage and then they're rebirth as something again so take that for what's going to happen because there's a reason why the series is kind of called reborn now that i really think about it and this this chapter made me go back and actually really rethink about this this was just the little details that akira mano dropped so early on and it was highly significant to suna's growth so again like we have where suna's in his head and and then come to find out reborn was telling suna that you know there was a high there was a big breach at the mafia prison okay remember last episode they, they heard they broke out of the mafia prison what did they do and before they can break out and everything they killed any of the guards or wardens that were there that was trying to stop them and come to find out these guys weren't part of the mafia they were exiled out the mafia hence why they were put into mafia prison and then they broke out and the, and all of this happened in a matter of less than a month it was two weeks and they flew all the way from whatever where, whichever country they were in i'm going to assume it was italy and flew all the way to japan and then transferred to kyoko middle school and that's when they start commencing all of this chaos that's happening currently in Suna's life and everyone else's life. And that was all for the purpose of getting to him. Then there's a letter that Reborn had to read to Suna from the ninth boss who's currently in charge right now before Suna can be inaugurated into his position. And he's like, yo Suna, you got 12 hours to handle this dude. If not, off with your head. And if you do manage to succeed, I'll give you a hundred years worth of tomatoes. Like as if my life is not on the line and to compensate for a job well done, I, I get I get tomatoes. I mean, they are from Italy, so they must be really good. But my life is on the line. Is my life really that little that I get tomatoes as a prize? <laughs> so it's just like, you know, Reborn is trying to tell Suna to like, hey, you can't keep running away from this. It's like they're coming towards you. You keep trying to run away and they eventually it's going to come right to, to your front doorstep. So it's either you just buckle up, uh, boy up, man up, take charge and go confront them. Or else they will come and confront you and you won't have any way to protect yourself or combat these guys. So get them while you still can, while the iron is still hot. And the only way to do that is go straight to their hideout. And on top of that, they have a hostage. And remember, I think it was in chapter 62 or 63 with that shadowy figure that I got showed you guys. It was Futa. How they came out to find out how much strong people were in the school, it was because of Futa. Remember, Futa is, he has the ranking system of all 85, 86,000 mafia leaders and members, okay? And on top of that, he gets his powers from the universe. So, more than likely, Mukuro made Futa somehow, some way. May Futa use his powers to scope out who was the strongest from the strongest, being Hibari, to the least strong, still strong, but way re far ranking from number one, and do that countdown that he did from 30 T all the way down to one. 
to get to Suna, okay? So they have to rescue Futa, Futa right? It's a rescue mission. And also, how you say, take down the first big bad guy of the entire series. So it's two things done. This one huge mission. Rescue mission and take down the bad guy. Okay, and unfortunately, we have not seen Suna train as of yet or anything. So Suna and the others are about to wing this entire mission to try to get back Futa and stop Mukuro doing from doing what he's doing from all the mayhem that he is causing in Nami Mori town. On top of that, actually, no, it's not only save Futa, but possibly save Peabody because Peabody is still at the hideout. He got beaten up, so save him and Futa as well. And come to find out, Goku Dera is fine. By the end of the chapter, he's all healthy, he's all fine, but that is BS. I just have to say that because man got stabbed multiple times in the chest. And you're okay in less than a day? Something's fishy about that. So, um, yeah, by next chapter, they're going to be heading out. So it's going to be Suna, Reborn, Yamamoto, Gokudera, and Bianchi. It's all going to head to the Kyoko Healthland hideout. That's where... Mukuro, Ken, and Chikusa are all waiting for them. And I think, in a way, Mukuro was planning for that. I think at that point, he would stop going after Suna because Suna will eventually have to come for him. So guys, do tell me how you felt about Chapter 65 of Katekyo, Him and Reborn. What were some things that you didn't realize until you reread it? If it's your first time reading it, how do you feel about this chapter? Um, in terms of like watching the anime, what were some differences that you seen from this chapter and from the episode that adapted this chapter? The links are in the description box so you guys can go check that out. And I'm Kimmy Chan of Anime Legends. And I will see you guys later. Bye. And oh, kiss the ring, kiss the ring.